Hello YouTube, this is Marauders here and let's continue on our little container journey. So here I have a most awesome <clears throat> Angular app. So it's a very simple Angular PWA with like three pages and some routing. So let's say I want to deploy this as a container. Okay, let's just go back to our uh, Visual Studio Code. I'm going to stop the ng serve and we're going to just type ng build to build up the to build up our application. So it's going to start and build our code. Okay, so now our code has been built and of course we can find the we can find the files inside the this folder this ng web which is what we called it so right now these are our deployment files now i hope you know that we can't just simply deploy uh, and uh, this folder just like that into a container because this is a website so you need a web server to actually display this uh, html file so what options do we have we can't just simply make a container with these files and poof it's able to display it to a web browser we need a web server and what are we going to use we are going to use what i like to call the swiss army knife of web servers because it's a web server it's a proxy server it it slices it dices it does a lot of things okay so the thing that we are gonna use is called engine x so it's basically a HTTP server a reverse proxy HTTP server and it does a lot of things okay we can't we can't actually cover most of the functions here so after this you should really go and read up on what nginx can do because if you have a problem with routing your your website or you want to do funny things to a web request nginx probably can do it okay so we're going to come let's start working on this we're going to make our docker file so we're going to create our docker file and i already know the the base image so the base image is called nginx simple enough and what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy from our source files which is from this engine uh engine web so we're gonna copy from our relative to our source folder which is this slash ng web we're yeah, gonna copy into this folder in the container. So this is just where nginx looks for the static web web files, and of course, nginx itself also needs a configuration file. So we're gonna just make a new folder so that we don't mess up with our own code. Not here. I want to make a new folder on the root. And we're going to call it engine x and we're going to name the file default.conf and the file where did it go i was going to make it under the engine x folder and it went right through to the it went into node modules okay that's nice okay never mind i'm just going to make it here default.conf so the extension, the file name is not important. The extension is important. It should always be with an extension of CONF because that's how Nginx is going to pick it up afterwards. So we're going to just make a simple Nginx configuration file. Once again, remember, this is just a sample. You really should actually look at exactly what are all these values for. Simply, simply put, this is defining that we have a server that's listening on port 80, which is a usual web server. And we're going to say the root of this server is going to be user slash share slash engine x slash html. So you would notice that this is exactly the 
file where we were copying our files into just now. And we're just going to say the index file for this folder for the server is going to be index.html, index.htm. Now, if you're familiar with configuring folders, you know that this is just to say what is the default file name for a folder if the client didn't provide it. <clears throat> so now we have a configuration file. We're going to go back to our Docker file and we are going to copy this configuration file from our nginx slash default.conf. Notice we're providing the file name instead of a folder this time. And we're going to copy it into there is this folder that already has this folder already exists in the nginx image so it's just a repository for all its configuration files so we're just going to copy this in and uh so that it will re pick up the configuration file and read it okay so that's it we have our docker file we have our web files and we have our configuration file for nginx okay great let's build this container so let's go into wsl docker build let's tag this as com ng web ng web test dot Okay, so now the image has been created. Let's just run it. So we're going to docker run dash dash rm. We're going to publish out our port. Let's say we'll publish it at um, 9090 into the port 80 and our ng web test. And let's see, da -da -da. okay, I made a mistake with the conf file. Okay, let's see, It's it says that I accidentally put in an, an, oh, that's because I didn't terminate this line with a semicolon. Yeah, so the configuration file has a, they have some, you need to make sure that the formatting follows. And uh, that's the reason why I decided not, whenever I run a container, I don't use dash D immediately. Because the I uh, we want to see at least I want to make sure that at least it just runs correctly first. So okay, so because of that problem, I'm gonna have to rebuild the image again. And we're gonna run it. Okay, didn't complain about anything, and uh let's just go. 9090. So, yep, we published it to port 9090. So, we'll go HTTP localhost 9090. And there we go. That's it. It was as simple as that. We've published our client side only files into a container image. Because what we had to do was we just basically inherited from the nginx uh, image and copied our files into the folder and voila the the we have a web server to serve our pages so there is actually still a slight problem here and that is with this url handling now if you you should probably know that when on the client side when we click on these different router links and it changes this address bar this is just happening on the client on the client end there's no request back into the web server but let's say okay let's say we want to allow people to just bookmark this page one and immediately come back to it from the from their bookmarks so we get a 404 not found. Why is that? Well, the simple answer is because page one doesn't exist. Remember that we only copied our web files into the our web files from our this folder, our this ng web folder. These are the only files inside inside the web folder. So obviously a request for 
page one isn't going to give any results because there's no file called page one. So what do we have to do? We essentially need to do what the usual development web servers do, like what happens when you type ng serve, which is to say that we want to tell them if you can't find a file on the file system, just redirect the file to index.html so that once the file loads, that means once the basic, once the basic Angular framework loads, it will look at the it will look at the path and it will redirect the the web browser. It will guide it to the appropriate page. So we need to handle the server side of this equation. So we're going to come back to our nginx configuration file, and we're going to add a new directive. So this directive is called the try files directory. Okay. So we're going to say try files dollar URI. So this is like a parameter dollar URI is basically the incoming request. So we're going to tell it, try the file, which the, which the browser asked for and see whether it's there or not. If it cannot find the file, try URI with a dash and if it still can't find a file we're going to just send it over to index.html and remember index.html is our angular angular <clears throat> bootstrap boot, they call it bootstrap or boot boot file and we're going to save this let's just quit out from this container and we're going to rebuild our container again. We're going to rebuild our container so that it will contain this uh, new config file. And now we're going to run it again. go back to our page our browser i'm going to open a new window again and now so first of course i'll just try 1990 so this works as we expected and then we're going to open a new tab and again i'm going to say page one and there you go we immediately come to page one and if I say page two, and I reload it, oh, I didn't press it. Enter there. So let me just make it clear. So you can see when we on the page when we navigate, there are no new HTTP requests being called for the pages. But if we reload this page, it will actually hit the web server for page two. And remember, there's no file. We don't actually have a page two file in our web server. What's happening is that engine X is basically saying, okay, I can't find a file anywhere. I'm just going to redirect you to index.html. And then once it redirects to index.html, the Angular, Angular code will be in charge of routing and showing the page two immediately instead of showing the home page where it's blank. Okay. So that's it. That was just a simple guide on how to make these client-side web pages into a container image.